a six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Messex here with the new Kubota RTV X1100. Kubota has been the leader in the diesel utility vehicle space here for nearly 10 years, uh, commanding a vast majority of the market. This machine's a lot different than a lot of the other machines that you'll find out there, and uh, Kubota's made a lot of improvements here for this latest iteration of this machine. Let's take a quick look. So what makes a Kubota RTV different than the rest of the utility vehicles that you find on the market is that Kubota puts a lot of tractor technology in these machines. Uh, the RTV 500, 900, 1100, and 1120 all use hydrostatic transmissions as opposed to a, a belt drive CVT or centrifugal clutch, uh, which is typically what you find in golf carts and four-wheelers. Uh, Kubota looked at this application and thought these are heavy-duty applications, so let's put heavy-duty tractor technology into these machines, and so that's what you have. Uh, when you look at a lot of the features, the benefits, the operational characteristics of these machines, they're just like tractors. Uh, so in the case of this one that we're standing right by right here, uh, the RTV 1100, this with the heat and the air conditioning as well as the RTV 1120, both use the larger D1105 engine for just under 26 horsepower. Uh, the RTV 900 has 23 horsepower and thus runs about 5 miles per hour slower on the top end. The RTV 500 is a smaller framed gas machine, all of which share a hydrostatic rear end, which is an important uh, feature to these machines. What the hydrostatic gives you is a, a tractor-like behavior when you go on and off the gas. So when you step on on the gas, the machine will go. When you take your foot off the gas, the machine stops. A centrifugal clutch-based machine would freewheel and coast, where this does not. Uh, the nice thing about that is if you're going down hills, or you have a 1,500-pound load in the back of this thing, or you're pulling a heavy trailer, the loads won't push you around. Uh, when you stop, the machine will stop, just like a tractor does. That is something that when the early generations of these machines came out, there were some complaints about because the stop was really abrupt. As Kubota has gone through iteration, and improvements to these machines, the stop is a little bit more gradual and predictable now and less harsh than it had been in early versions. This latest version of the RTV features a new suspension system. Uh, the original versions that we had out, the original RTV series, had a fixed axle on the back. Um, not a bad design, a very heavy duty design, but not the best riding design. So this latest version here in the X series, Kubota has improved upon that and fitted an independent suspension to the rear end. Uh, you can see right here in the back, there's a large adjustable coilover shock that is on both sides of the machine. Um, also in here are improved U-joints uh, on the older series. RTVs when you start to hit around the 1500 hour mark. Oftentimes we'd see guys having to make repairs and stuff to some of the U-joints in here. Uh, this later series has an upgraded and updated design that does not suffer that same flaw, so hopefully we should see years of problem-free service out of these machines. So we're sitting here in an RTV 1100. Uh, the 1100 is the cabbed version of these machines. One unique thing about this cab is that it is one of the only utility vehicles with a true factory cab. Uh, if you look here, the frame of the machine is a unibody design, and when you close those doors, they're nice and tight. It is a cab that is made for the machine. Most of the other competitors in this space will use a bolt-on cab. Uh, bolt-on cabs tend to, uh, to rattle and make quite a bit of noise. Um, they don't fit nearly as nice the doors don't close as tightly. Uh, this is near automotive quality, so when you close the doors, it's nice and tight, and it's a nice sealed cab. Uh, we do have bolt-on cabs as well on our lower series machines. We hardly use them anymore. Until um, we take a base RTV 900, bolt a cab on, you're nearly within $1,000 of, of this, which is just a much nicer machine as far as fit and finish goes. Uh, this is a machine that has both heat and air conditioning in it, uh, just what you're used to as far as automotive style, speed controls and temperature selections, uh, the ability to recycle, recycle inside air or bring in fresh outside air. Uh, it's just a nice, efficient air conditioning system. Uh, the one frustration that we do sometimes have with these integrated cab systems is the doors don't come off. So in the winter, in the summertime, um, it is not a case where you can just simply remove the doors from the machine, but Kubota does give you windows that will roll up and roll down just like your truck. Uh, it does keep the interior clean. Uh, one issue we do see when the doors come off is just the inside of the machine tends to accumulate dust and that kind of stuff, and um, keeping the cab on does help keep the machine in a little bit nicer condition. 
They have a new digital dash down here that'll give you a miles per hour readout along with some idiot lights just to give you some simple indicators of what's going on in the machine. These are tier four final compliant, so there is no need for a diesel particulate filter or any of those emission systems in this horsepower class. So it's a simple small diesel engine just like you're used to from any other machine. Another improvement that Kubota made in the X series here over the other RTVs or the shifting is now a little bit easier than it had been in the past. When you depress the brake, uh, it releases all the pressure from the transmission, making this easier to shift. Um, there's also two ranges now where the old RTV series had three. They were able to get rid of the middle range by matching the torque demand of the transmission and the torque supply of the engine closer to one another. Um, so it's less shifting needed down here and your, your pick up and get up and go feels a little bit more snappy and a little bit faster just because the the power of the engine and the demand of the transmission match each other much better. Kubota has a good supply of accessories and aftermarket items available for the RTVs from tire options and rims and work lights and bed liners and mirrors and uh, CV guards and uh, uh, mud flaps, the list goes on and on. Uh, being one of the most popular utility vehicles as well, there's good aftermarket support for these as well. Um, so on a, a website, Kubota's Orange Aftermarket, you'll find a lot of accessories for the RTVs as well as from other companies as well. Uh, you'll notice here this unit is fitted with a Boss snowplow. Uh, Kubota offers two of their own snowplow options and we do a lot with the Boss line. Um, our preference for these really comes in that this is a little bit easier piece to install. Um, Kubota's large plow options are, are pretty complex, require some additional hydraulic pumps and these are really cost effective and very very well built. Um, so we think very highly of this um, and Kubota's V-plow and straight plow options are pretty good as well. Operationally here when we want to run one of these machines around, uh, we have a couple things here on the dash. There's a tilt steering wheel so we can lower the steering wheel down to a comfortable angle. Parking brake over here in the side and a range selector here on the orange handle. So we're going to release the parking brake by pushing the button and then letting that go forward and then move this up into high range. Okay, and then once we're there we just step on the gas and off we go. The large RTVs all have power steering on it, so there's very little steering effort that it takes here in order to straighten the machine out. you notice here too that we talked about this being an integrated cab and not an aftermarket thought. So the amount of noise that's in here is really uh, quite low. I mean, easy to have a conversation with somebody and you don't need to shout or wear earmuffs or anything because of the reverberation that happens inside of a loosely fit cab. You can see the nose of that snow plow sticking up too. One of the nice things that Boss has in this design is a lot of clearance in the front. So if you need to pull this up onto a trailer or something, the plow won't bottom out on your trailer as you're pulling up. You can see here on the snow plow, Boss has a little controller here inside the cab. So if we want to fold our wings out there to the side to, to sweep to one side or bring them both forward in order to collect a pile of snow, it's right there on your controller for how you want to move the wings around. Now that V-plow option is only about $800 more than what the straight plow is. Uh, if you look at the cost of V-plows, they're typically really costly and that $800 is one of the cheaper V-plows that's available. We do pride ourselves in giving a fair and honest assessment of equipment and no machine can be perfect. Um, there are two shortcomings that we could really come up with when we're talking about the RTV series. First can be that hydrostatic transmission. Um, while it has a lot of pulling power, uh, there are times that it doesn't feel like it is as a, a gutsy, fast, fly around type design as what some of the other uh, higher speed gas utility vehicles are. If you want to go out and blast through trails and uh, go 50 miles an hour down the road, these are not the machines for you. Um, this is a machine that's really geared more towards work 
and heavy duty applications for hauling loads um, really at, at moderate speeds. Um, 25 miles an hour in one of these things oftentimes feels plenty fast. It feels a lot faster than what it sounds like. Um, but if you're looking to go blasting up a hill at your hunting camp to go chase down deers and keep up with your friends, uh, this is not it. Uh, this is not the machine that you'll be wanting to look at. Um, another shortcoming that we can come up with too here in the X series is uh, Kubota really did a lot to increase the cooling capacity of this machine. And if you look down here underneath the hood, uh, there's a radiator for an engine, but there's actually two radiators for the transmission, a large one here in the front and another one around the side. While it's great at dissipating heat, um, the one downside to that is that in the winter time when it's cold, this thing does take a couple minutes to warm up. Um, if it's near zero degrees outside like it gets here periodically and you hop in there and kick the thing off and go, uh, you won't get a whole lot beyond 10-12 miles an hour until the hydraulic fluids start to warm up and the thing is able to pick up speed and go. Um, you'd find exactly the same behavior from a tractor's hydrostatic. Um, that pump just can't pump fluid efficiently when it's cold and thick and so it does need to warm up and with two large radiators in these machines that can take some time. Um, so if you keep those two caveats in mind, um, these are absolutely outstanding utility vehicles. Uh, we here at Messick sell one of these things about every four days. Um, they're very, very well accepted among our customers and very, very prominent in the marketplace for good reason. Uh, Kubota's built an absolutely outstanding utility vehicle that really no company has been able to deliver at this price point. Uh, so if you have any needs for a machine like this and we can help you out, stop by any of our stores, uh, visit us at messix.com or call us at 800-222-3373. Thank you.